going to balance on the component. And uh, this is essentially exactly what we did in the, in the single phase case. We write the uh, balance of mass, so the mass in and out of the aqueous phase, uh, mass in from a well, um, or, or in or out, you know, depending on the sign, if it's an injector or producer, uh, must equal the total mass accumulated in the aqueous phase. And the only caveat is that we introduce uh, this sort of rho w, uh, that's the mass of the water component divided by not the total volume, but the volume of the aqueous phase, okay? Uh, and in this case, it, it's just the mass, it's just the density of the water in the reservoir, right? But then we multiply that by saturation. So the saturation of water is sort of, you know, the percentage of water in the mixture. You know, in the mixture being oil, gas, and water. Right? So we're going to end up with three saturations, and later we'll see this uh, equation will be one of the kind of closer relations we need to solve the problem. But I'll go ahead and write it here. Uh, we're going to have a saturation of water, a saturation of oil, and a saturation of gas, and those must all add to one, right? So that we have unity of mixtures, right? <coughs> so given those definitions, uh, we just plug them in, and essentially we derive identically the exact same conservation of mass or continuity equation we did uh, in the single phase case with the exception that, you know, we have this new definition of the saturation, okay? Um, we're still going to use uh, formation volume factors, so there's really nothing new here. Uh, the formation volume factor is exactly what it was in the single phase case. Uh, with the exception that we're going to use uh, the density, the, this rho w, so the density of water uh, divided by, the, the density of water in the aqueous phase divided by the volume of the aqueous phase, okay? Um, but other than that, then it's just the same, right? The reservoir volume, the, the, res the formation volume factor has identical defi de definition as it did in the single phase case. And it's also typically around one for water, okay? So that's just in summary. At the, at the top is the equation that we derived. Uh, if we combine that with the definition of formation volume factor and you plug it in, then we can write our continuity equation in terms of uh, the formation volume factor. And it, again, nearly identical to what it was before aside from this saturation. Okay, so for, uh, we're going we're gonna to balance now on the oil. So we have the mass of oil in the oil oleic phase, right? Um, we would, if we would be very general, we would also have the mass of oil uh, volatilized oil in the gaseous phase, but we're neglecting that. That's black oil model, right? So we don't have that there. Um, the mass in or out uh, from a well must equal the total mass accumulated. We introduced this just likewise same term. So essentially what follows here is exactly like everything we just said for water, except the O's are, the W's are O's. Right? Nothing new on this slide. We get the exact same continuity equation uh, with the W's now O's. Right? However, we have to give some special consideration to what the formation volume factor for oil is. And while this is sort of a busy figure, I think it's a very, very good figure. Uh, it's sort of busy on this one slide. But I think it's a really, really good figure. So let's just first consider this over here. So if we can think of our oil like a piston, right? It's under pressure in, in the reservoir. It's under pressure. And initially, everything is oil, okay? 
And then we drop our piston, thereby lowering the pressure. And gas comes out of solution, right? When we drop the pressure, gas comes out of solution, and also possibly volatilized oil goes into gas. Okay, and that's sort of the second, qu uh, second case. And the pressure at which that occurs is what? The bubble point, right? The bubble point, so P, B, P. Right? So the pressure at which that occurs is the bubble point, okay? So now, if we take that, uh, you know, anytime we, we, we go to the surface, we're gonna go above the bubble point, right? So, um, or drop the pressure below the bubble point. So, so if we then take that gas individually, the gas that came out of solution plus the volatilized oil, and we take it to the surface so that we're here, right? Then at the surface, all the gas is going to come out of solution. I mean, the gas is going to expand, and the oil is going to condensate out, okay? But in the black oil model, we said there was very little volatilized gas to begin with. I'm sorry, volatilized oil in the gaseous phase to begin with, so we're going to say that's negligible. The oil that would have condensated out is so little we're not going to consider it. So that thing's going to blow away. Likewise, if we take the oil to the surface, right now all the gas is going to come out of solution, and all we're going to have left with is oil here, right? So the formation volume factor, formation volume factor of oil is two divided by six, right? So it's, it's the volume of oil in the reservoir divided by the volume of oil at standard conditions, right? And uh, that's the only one we're going to deal with right now, but while we're on the slide, we can go ahead and look at what the other ones are. And so if you, if you ever uh, sort of get confused about what these formation volume factor and uh, See if there was something else I want to say about this. Yeah, later later we're going to introduce the uh, these volatilized oil ratio and solution gas ratio. Um, but if you're ever confused about exactly what they are, <coughs> just come back to this picture. I think this picture is pretty clear. Right? Exactly what they are. But uh, again, we're we're always going to assume that the volatilized oil ratio is zero because four is negligible. Okay, so now with sort of a, an idea of what the formation volume factor for oil is, this, uh, at least the first line, is just what we picture, what we looked at in the pictures in words, right? So it's the uh, volume of oleic, so oil plus dissolved gas phase divided by the standard condition volume of the oil at phase, or the oil only when we bring it to the surface, right? And so with those definitions, then um, you, ha you have this, but, but more importantly, if you look at this last equation, if we, if we divide this equation through, well, first of all, we, we multiply here by one, right? That's just one. But then that allows us, if we multiply through by one, and then rearrange the equation, uh, then using the, this equation up here, um, we can ultimately define what the, the density of oil under uh, reservoir conditions is as a function of the density of oil in standard conditions and the um, formation volume factor of oil. Right. So, you know, if you just re read this equation, it's density under reservoir conditions or the oil leak phase must equal to the density reservoir conditions of the oil plus the density under reservoir conditions of the dissolved gas. Right. So if you just look, that is equal to those definitions.
So then with that, we can finally rewrite the uh, continuity equation of uh, oil, or the oil, the component of oil. Again, it's nothing different than the same equation for water other than the O's are W's, and we have a slightly modified definition of VO. So the one that's really different is gas, because in, even in a black oil model now, we will consider the dissolved gas in the oil phase, okay? So when we write the mass balance, since we balance on component, we have the mass in and out of gas in the gaseous phase, plus the mass in and out of dissolved gas in the oleic phase, plus any mass coming in from a well in the gas phase, plus any mass coming in or going out, right, in or out, depends on the exactly the producer, plus any mass coming in, because it's a little odd to say coming in, and that's the way we write the equations, but it's a little odd to say uh, gas coming in as if we were, uh, without considering EOR operations and all that, right? Normally, if we're trying to get oil out, we're not going to be injecting oil, right, or gas. So, anyway. Uh, so then we have, you know, the mass coming in f uh, for the well and the dissolved gas in the oil phase plus the mass accumulated in the gaseous phase and the mass accumulated for gas in the oil phase. Right? So again, we're balancing on the component, and since we have components of gas in two phases, we have some extra terms in our mass balance equation. Okay. Then we use all the standard definitions. Um, the only new one here, um, well, I guess there's two, but the, the density of, of gas is the mass of the gas component in the gaseous phase, and the density of dissolved gas is the mass of dissolved gas in the volume of the oleic phase. Right. And this is where, if you go back one previous slide to that equation, then the, the, the total density in the oleic phase must equal the density of the dissolved gas plus the density of the oil. <clears throat> so then, uh, the um, equation down here at the bottom just introduces those definitions, and then it's just rewritten exactly right there at the top, and then we take the limits and we get the continuity equation now for gas, and this one does look different because we have the, the gas in the gaseous phase and the dissolved gas in the oil phase. So this is the um, uh, solution gas ratio that we talked about. If you go back to the figure, right, that's the, the uh, volume of the dissolved gas under standard conditions divided by the volume of oil under standard conditions. And the formation volume factor for gas, again, the best way to sort of interpret this is to go back to the picture. So one, right, this was, this was the volume of gas after expansion of the reservoir or the pressure dropping below the bubble point. So this includes gas and volatilized oil, but we're going we're gonna to consider that there's negligible volatilized oil, okay? And then we just play around, do the same thing here, play around with the terms until we get this, and ultimately, uh, yeah, so just to reiterate, if no liquid comes out of the gaseous gas phase, RV equals zero, and hence it's a black oil model, sort of. That's where the name comes from. Right. So using those definitions, uh, back into our continuity equation for uh, the gas component in the two phases, then ultimately we finally get this equation. All right. Okay. So there's our three equations. How many unknowns are in those equations? So we have three equations, but how many unknowns? Well, 
U, the U's, the, we have three U's. Those are velocities, right? The velocity of the water, the oil, and the gas components. We have three saturations, right? We don't, so we don't know what the velocities are yet. We don't know what the saturations are yet. <coughs> is, that, is that it? Those will be in, in injectors or producers. They're boundary conditions, essentially. What about the formation volume factors? Their functions of density, right? And remember, I mean, we haven't introduced anything yet that looks like pressure, but. Um, Pressure is kind of a weird thing because it's sort of a, I mean, if you, if the pressure, thermodynamic pressure is like a, a function of the internal, the change in internal energy with respect to density. So pressure is a function of density, right? So let's assume that there's some inverse mapping, right? So that density the, is some inverse function of pressure, right? And then go back to our picture, right? So the, so the Bs all have our functions of density. Right? And there's some inverse mapping that takes density back to pressure. When I go back to our picture, well, what we did there was we lowered the pressure and things changed. Gas, gases came out of solution, oil dropped out of condensate, right? So things changed. So evidently, the Bs must be some sort of function of pressure, too. Okay. Well, we haven't introduced the pressure yet. Because right now we're just looking for our velocities, right? So, do we have a relationship between anything that's an unknown now and pressure? Darcy's law. Darcy's law right? When in doubt, just yell out Darcy's law in petroleum engineering class. <laughs> You'd probably be right most of the time. Okay. Yeah. So, we have a relationship between the velocities and pressure. So let's introduce those. 